Hello and good evening to you. Welcome to News 360's Live Money News Hub here at Adesawe in Kanda. My name is Alfred Okansi. And I am Aisha Yakubu. Top of the bulletin this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint. Piccadilly Biscuits and My Life Insurance. Ashanti Regional Security Council declares Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology Campus Security Zone. The state amends charges against Mbato Chief uh, Executive Officer of Men's Gold, Nanapia Mensa. Also, Western Region's major referral center, Ifyan Kwanta Hospital, and other major hospitals in the region do not offer DNA testing. Nigeria's President Mohamed Buhari dispatches envoy to South Africa over the treatment of her citizens. We have details of these and many more stories coming up in the next one. Uh, we start off in the Ashanti region, where the Ashanti Regional Security Council, RESEC, has declared Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology a security zone until further notice. A statement signed by the Regional Minister and Chairman of RESEC, Simon Osei-Mensah, directed that any person or group of persons who may have grievances against the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology to report to the appropriate authority for redress or necessary action. The statement urged the public, especially parents and guardians, <coughs> to be caution, uh, to caution their words, uh, the wards to abide by the university's regulations and refrain from acts that may disturb the peace on the KNUSD campus. The statement further warned that persons who disturb the peace on campus will be dealt with in accordance with the law. Let's see a bit on this. And Simon Osemensa is the Ashanti Regional Minister and Chairman of the Regional Security Council. He joins me on the telephone uh, for a conversation on this. I thank you for your time this evening. Now, what has necessitated declaring KNUST campus a security zone? Thank you very much and greetings to your television viewers and listeners. Uh, actually, we have intelligence that uh, some people are planning some illegal activities to disrupt the peace that we have on Kwame Nkrumah campus. And as Regional Security Council, we cannot wait for anything to happen before we take other measures. But for that matter, we are being pre preemptive and making sure that what happened last year will not reoccur on the campus. I see. What what illegal activity is this? Uh, if if you if you care to tell us exactly what the situation is. Yeah. For now, uh, what the public needs to know is what we put out there. You know, in security information management, at any time you should be able to determine what information is necessary for the public. So for now, this is what we think we, we or what we deem necessary for public consumption. As time goes on, you know, there's a need to come out with further details. We'll do that. I see. I ask this because the SRC also addressed the press uh, earlier in the day and they made the case that indeed Otunfo Seitu has indicated that if they are not excited about uh, decisions taken in the university, they can resort to him uh, uh, for, for redress. How did you arrive at this decision? Is the university authority also aware of this? Uh, when we as a regional security council, when we are taking decisions, uh, we look at the agency of the issue, we come out with a statement, and then consult all the other stakeholders if necessary. If it is not every security issue, you can do full consultation before you take the final decision. If you do that, what is going to happen is that uh, something could happen and it will be unfortunate to tell people that we wanted full consultation before we put in such a measure. We put in these measures. Unfortunately for us, Utunfo is out of the jurisdiction of the country, and therefore the need for this action. You realize when last year uh, the violence occurred, Utunfo again was outside the country. 
So we needed to take something, some immediate, immediate decision to arrest the situation and then inform him whenever he arrives as the chancellor of the university. And it's a similar thing we've done now. I see. Uh, I want to thank you for your time this evening. Mr. Uh, Go for the Asante Regional Minister, and he is the chairman of the uh, Regional Security Council, the Simon Osemensa, uh, clarifying or giving some more details as to why the KNUST campus is now a security zone. Say so they've picked some illegal activity that may occur if that uh, measure is not put in place. So keep an eye on this particular story uh, and a subsequent bulletins and be updating you on this. But student leaders of the University of Ghana, Lagon, have urged government to find immediate solutions to the perennial accommodation challenges that face the students. As Wade Smile reports, the students say government's education policies make it prudent for tertiary institutions to fine-tune is infrastructure to meet growing demands. The University of Ghana offered admission to close to 11,000 students in the 2019-2020 academic year. The university currently has about 48,000 continuing students, but there are only 19,500 bed spaces available in both the residential halls and the private hostels in the university. Not even those who have been offered the chance to secure accommodation through the login system have been able to solve their challenge. The situation has created a situation where students who are unable to secure residential accommodation are led to find alternatives. We have over uh, 17,000 counting students who are automatically going to be non-resident, not solely by choice but because of circumstances so that is the situation and the reality on campus today as we speak and it's not a, a peculiar issue to this particular academic year it's been there i came to school three years ago i met it they have called for partnership between stakeholders to resolve the perennial situations talk about the free shs and all of that so that should in effect tell you that this free hss shs today upon graduation will come to the universities so it means that there's going to be uh, so much burden on the universities to accommodate this to them. So you must twist your uh, academic agenda towards that particular direction. There must be some fun tuning to the whole policy of academic environment to accommodate students. The student leadership has revealed the situation is not that of affordability but non-availability of beds. It's a matter of the facilities not being available. So we don't have the structures as we speak today so that we can say that, okay, we have the halls, but people cannot afford it because of the charges. I, I guarantee you this, that because of the situation we have today, even if you charge a little bit commercial price on campus, people will still afford. Because you are coming from the northern region, from the Volta region, from the Sonyani and all of that. And all you have is your admission and campus. If you don't get her to sleep where are you going to sleep a student leader adam karim says the accommodation deficit should not be the reason to deny prospective students admission even with regards to lecture theaters we have some lecture theaters with about 600 students in one class at a time there are lots of students who live around campus some are just around north Legon, some are just around east Legon, Medina. there are even some whose parents are lecturers on campus but they still have you know, rooms within the hostels on campus. So you, you can see that it's that unfair. So such students, if only they would be fair to themselves and to their colleagues, you know, to forfeit their rooms so other people can have, you know, access to facilities. In a related development, the Bureau of National Investigations, BNI, has commenced investigations into allegations of hoarding of beds by some students and authorities at the University of Ghana. Now, prosecutors handling the case against Chief Executive Officer of Men's Gold Ghana Limited, Nanapia Mensa, have pressed new charges against him. Nanapia Mensa, also known as Nam One, uh, was facing 13 charges last month, but now has 48 additional charges to answer, bringing total charges to 61. Here's a report by Selim Amenya. The charges include money laundering, unlawful deposit taking, sale of minerals without a license and defrauding by false pretense. The latest charge sheet also has listed names of the persons allegedly defrauded by Nam One. They include Vulcan Basla, 350,000 cities, Kofi Chinebua, 100,000 cities, Godfred Odro Yabua, 94,500, Evelyn Trefor, 170,000 cities, Emmanuel Opon Kobi, 200,000 cities, Rahel Siam, 28,000 cities, and Frank Kunedu Ajiman, 26,000 cities. 
ASP Sylvester Asari, who is leading the state's prosecution, asked the circuit court on Tuesday for an adjournment to file the new charge sheet. This is the second time the charge sheet has been amended after the initial 7 was amended to 13 and now 61. Nanapia Mensa, who is currently on bail after the circuit court varied his bail conditions, had been in detention in Dubai since December 7, 2018, when he was arrested on charges of defrauding a business partner there. The case has been adjourned to October 23. Well, let's stay in the course. This time around, six suspects in the Isiakwa murder case have been remanded into prison custody to enable the prosecutor await advice from the Attorney General's office. Meanwhile, colleagues of the deceased uh, teacher who were present in court say they want justice to be served. Here's a report by Yvonne Ikwe. The six suspects have been charged with conspiracy to commit crime to wit murder and murder. The prosecutor, Chief Inspector Margaret Conto, appealed with the court for more time to enable the Attorney General's office finish them with advice. The presiding judge, Alice Efwa Yurenchi of the Chebi District Court, granted her the plea. Daughter of the deceased teacher, Charlotte Somwadua, is confident justice would be served. Eastern Regional Chairman of the Ghana National Association of Teachers, John Selby, who was in court with other executives said they will follow the case to its logical conclusion. As a union, we have the interest of every member of NAT at heart. So as I said earlier on, that's why we are here. And uh, we will do all that we could to ensure that our fallen colleague get justice. Colleagues of the diseased teacher who were also in court want justice to be served. Psychologically, we still feel the pain. What we want is the, um, the, 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 there will be a correct judgment concerning the issue. The six suspects allegedly lynched the deceased teacher, Samuel Somwadia, before he died at Esiakwa. The family of the six suspects were at the court to offer their emotional support. <laughs> Now let's go to the Western region, where the region's major referral center, the Ephraim Quanta Hospital, and other major hospitals in the region do not offer DNA testing services. Families of the four missing Takrada girls will therefore face a Herculean task should they press on for an independent DNA matching test, at least in the Western region. The Ghana Police Service is preparing to make public results of the DNA matching test after samples of the families of the four Takrad missing girls were taken. The DNA matching test became necessary following the recovery of human remains from two separate hideouts of 31-year-old Nigerian Samwa Wos, the suspect behind recent kidnap cases in the western region. The four families have demanded for an independent test after that of the Ghana Police Service, a demand the service has agreed to. But what are the options available if they are to conduct an independent DNA matching test? Efian Kwanta Regional Hospital is the major referral center in the western region. Do you offer DNA services in any form? No, at the moment we don't have the facilities to uh, carry out DNA tests in the hospital. Okay. Yeah, so we don't we don't do DNA tests here at all. Okay, but um, I think Quanta is a major referral center for Western Region. Don't you see this as a disincentive? Uh, at the moment, I would say it would be ideal if we had it here. Yes, yeah, because of the paternity issues that come up every now and then yes but requests for DNA tests uh, actually haven't been coming very much families of the four missing Takrada girls could face an uphill task if they go ahead with their request for an independent DNA matching after the results from the Ghana police service are out 
Now, mind you, they express that willingness for an independent test. But for Western region, we doubt that very much because, as you heard from the administrator of the major referral health center here in the Western region, that is the Ephraim Quanta Regional Hospital, Michael Danso, they don't offer such service. Well, we'll proceed to some other uh, well known health centers here in the western region to find out whether we'll be lucky. Another hospital also known to offer specialized services is the Takrade Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Kapoha Hospital. Unfortunately, there is no such service on offer. In the wake of the discovery of hydrocarbons in commercial quantities offshore Cape Three Points in the western region, one hospital that upgraded its services to be able to take care of the health needs of expatriate workers is the Sakamon Hospital. Sadly, DNA testing is not among services the hospital offers. This is about the Fort Health facility we just visited and we've not been lucky. According to authorities here at the Takrade hospital they don't also offer such service for the western region deputy director of clinical care dr emmanuel atudodo it is not surprising that there are no dna services at the region's major referral center i'm not worried hospitals exist solely to provide diagnostic tests malaria tb hiv aids etc etc so if it had been that those tests were not available, I would be worried. But genetic tests, the DNA test for identification of human beings, a specialized area. So where that need arises, it will be samples will be taken and then sent to the appropriate well-equipped lab to do it. That's it. So I'm not worried at all. But, but in the foreseeable future, would you recommend such service to hospitals like the Ephraim County Regional Hospital and other regional hospitals? Not at all. Not at all. The number of times that a hospital will need such a test is very minimal. You don't waste capital on, on it. No. You can always outsource, take sample, and then go for it to be done in a specialized area. It doesn't make any economic sense at all. Obviously, families of the four missing Takrade girls will indeed be faced with an uphill task if they press on with their demand for an independent DNA test. As you just saw, all the major health centers that we visited here in the Western region do not offer such service. In fact, what we are picking is that DNA testing is a specialized service. Thus, the families will have to dig deeper into their pockets if they are still hell-bent on conducting an independent test. Eric J, TV3 News, Takrade. And on MTN Video Reports this evening, our citizen journalist Michael Kwautando reports on deteriorated road at uh, Sekendi Takrade in the Western Region. The road is very bad. We can't pass through this road with our cars. So we have to park and walk to work. This road has been destroyed. But for the original road that we used to pass in, the people staying around this area first contributed an amount of 500 each to clear this road and now contributed 1,000 each to make this convert over here. It's left with sand to fill this place to the top but we are appealing to the government the ngos the second and takrade metropolis assembly to come to our aid my name is michael kwatando speaking from impinton second you can also send your video report via whatsapp on 0551 433044 that's 0551 433044. You're still live here on News 360. Remember, we're live on DSTV Channel 279, all across the world on TV3 Ghana on Facebook. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly.
Time for business on News 360. Good evening and thanks for joining us. My name is Nanikia Mensa Brampa, beginning with tonight, Minister of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, Professor Frimpon Boating, has called on African leaders to be visionary and capitalize on technology to spearhead growth of agriculture. Speaking at the 2019 African Green Revolution Forum, AGRF, in Accra. He was confident technology will assist in creating opportunities in agribusiness and transform Africa's economy. The African Green Revolution Forum assembled experts from around the globe to discuss agriculture. Deliberations centered on capitalizing technology to promote the growth of agribusiness. Other areas of interest were how to mobilize resources from the private sector to spearhead agriculture. Issues about storage and process of agri produce also took center stage at the forum. The need to increase investments and stimulate growth were also discussed at the conference. Minister of Environment, Science, Innovation and Technology, Professor Frempon Boatin, called on African leaders to consider technology as a way of boosting agriculture. In agriculture, there are opportunities in how we grow and manage food systems from farm to table. There are opportunities in disease prevention, increased productivity, harvest, storage and processing. It is all about vision and the political will. Commissioner for Agriculture and Rural Economy at African Union, Josefa Sako, underscored the need to transform agriculture to address poverty on the continent. We need to be in their place. We need to create jobs to avoid terrorism. We are talking about this region when we have uh, Boko Haram. We are talking at the Horn of uh, Africa where we have El Shabaab. So we need to really create jobs for these youth so that they will stop this, this so-called terrorism on our continent. We want a safe continent and a peaceful continent. President of the African Green Revolution, Dr. Agnes Kalibata, called for increased investment to SMEs on the African continent. The opportunity is right here now. We can do it. We can invest in Africa and ensure that Africa's youth have jobs. We can invest in Africa and ensure that African farmers thrive. We can invest in Africa and ensure that Africa prospers and stops being a problem continent for everybody else. The theme for the 2019 forum is Grow Digital, leveraging digital transformation to drive sustainable food systems in Africa. Let's look at some more business stories tonight. And basket weaving is a lucrative business here in Ghana, but for cane weavers along the switchback road at cantonments where baskets and boxes for hampers are produced in commercial quantities, that is not the case. Now, the lament business has been generally low and slow after they were evacuated from their area location by the police and are appealing to government for support to help expand their business. A couple of months ago, the police came in to uh, essentially relocate the people you see here. These are basket weavers. They use canes to weave baskets and other materials for sale. And so they've been doing this business for the past five years now. And the structure you see there, the, the world structure you see there, was where they, uh, they used to be until the police came in to ask them to relocate. And so they've been in this business right here at this location uh, for just a little over a month now. And we came here today to find out uh, what has been business since you know they were relocated and if indeed this is where they asked them to come we're told the earlier place was um, a land belonging to um, a businessman and that was what has been secured uh, uh, for the businessman by the police so I'm here to speak to one of them the basket weavers to find out chief uh, good morning your life on TV3. Uh, a month ago, now please follow Bear relocating more. Uh, what? Now na, more? Na, uh, Echehanum. Ana. Um, Pachana, you were uh, fancy or magic near inside. Okay. Uh, first, now you enjoy fancy beer, but some best uh, three months ago, and a uh, man be by was here for the job. Now, on our land, no documents, a choice, land in here, uh, or your owner. You know what they fire Labadi and uh, Labadi municipal assembly or the Koho. I'm a man for who say was simple in for that sign say land and Indian. You know, but my time say you free her 
that was in free on the 15th of June. And to my umbrella, or by now, who send the panel of hundred doors into a side another month. I can home to another month in this year, one Fabian count to a buyer and a buyer say the next Sunday or a bant. You know, your husband and all the excavator, you know, a buyer with police. I'm a mobile home by an embedded Malaysia Henry. After that, you know, and so. I may be in your money in a bar, a quano, the quano, and I was here for management. As you heard from one of the basket weavers, this is a current situation since they were evicted from their uh, former location by the police about a month ago, and so they've had to move their 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 materials here to do business, but they've got a difficulty working uh, from this place. Let me just speak to a final uh, one of them who is here uh, to also get his thoughts on business since they relocated. Uh, Chief Midas saying, Since I'm mobile, I'm no business, is saying. Oh, say business the enquiry ye kra business ko ye say the man kra the hu the man kwa fa because yadu ma say ba sa yadu ma ba sa so we say to ye fin sa the kwa the go time we won say the kwa point ko ye ni asaba kwa o ya sabe gu kwa o pe ya foforo so bla ye bla ye sa ba ne beti na bi bi pa fa yadu ma yun pa nka de a e be because yadu ma we say tolerance e ma o man no e say this can so there e say blow man no man o man so there because I my idea, I didn't clamp my edge, my woman say a slab answer. So bits me up, boy, my edge, my edge, my two pump party and cabaret because Osho and Udi Wanisha Amano, Amama, so China say bamboo and win a chrome woman. The same thing, you have different kinds of bamboo. Our Ghana has here, you bits me there, I develop your mind and my mind inside a two pump because Osho, I bits me up, boy, and not a fat to be crumpled as a bits me, I have boy, my year. Neither were boy, I'm my man's side day. That's me, I couldn't, you must say. Well, as my colleague Pakwisi Asari, they're bringing us some of the plights of these basket weavers around the cantonment area. But let's move away from that. And Ghana's housing deficit currently stands at 2 million housing units. Government would have to build between 190,000 to 200,000 units of houses each year for the next 10 years to bridge the gap. Now, in the following reports, George Quinning assesses the capacity of the real estate industry as an alternative in bridging the gap. It is estimated that about 85,000 real estate transactions take place annually in Ghana. Successive governments, through several initiatives, have undertaken some housing projects. However, this has yielded little results as majority of Ghanaians still struggle to either rent or acquire homes. Ghana is faced with multiple land ownership issues and litigations mainly due to the communal system of land ownership. Figures reveal that there are about 80,000 pending cases of land title litigation in urban Ghana. Aside land issues, high interest rates and high cost of building materials are some factors impeding the progress of building by some individuals. The real estate industry is key to bridging the country's housing deficit, currently pegged at 2 million housing units. But there appears to be less collaboration between government and the sector. The definition for affordable housing at the moment is not well defined. Uh, there has been an attempt to define it, but as we speak now, it is not much clear. Um, the definition that was uh, um, uh, given in the National Housing Policy document is not in itself adequate. We have to understand, especially the developers, we have to be clear in our mind what is the floor area of such a property, what will be the material inputs, and then what will be the price ceiling. That must be done in relation to the current market. Concerns over the years have been the overpricing of properties, which has deterred many from engaging developers. Though the Bank of Ghana has for the third time this year served notice against the pricing, advertising and receipts or payment for goods and services in foreign currencies, the real estate sector falls short. Real estate, it's, it's not easy. If I come to tell you last week your house was costing 150,000 Ghana cities, but today, no, listen, I want to change it to one, 160. You hit the roof because you tell me it's only last week. So it's just a measure that we use, but the law states that you should pay for everything in Ghana cities. Available data shows the former sector made of about 20% of the entire labor force and about 80 to 90% of urban households cannot afford a mortgage to purchase the cheapest developer's unit. Major concerns by prospective house owners are overpricing by private developers. However, some tax experts have advised government tax these developers 
whose properties are left unoccupied. And for them, this will in a way check overpricing and trigger more buys. But what are these developers saying about this? You will only drive prices up if you, because if I have my house and it's not occupied and then you are charging me tax on it, I'll put that tax on the person who comes in. And, and all we are trying to do is to drive prices down. Clearly, a lot more is expected from government and the developers in order to include the over 70% of the population in the real estate market. They are able to lend us money at a cheaper rate. If you go to most of the advanced countries, they are borrowing at 3 5 percent, you know, to do projects. And if we are here borrowing at 24 to 32 percent and all that, you can't tell me that it is the deliberate, you know, on the part of developers to charge high. And the government empowers private developers and takes steps to address issues concerning the sector, effort in bridging Ghana's housing deficit will be far-fetched. George Quinn, TV3, Accra. Well, and that's how we wrap up on business tonight. There's more on 3news.com. Visit there. My name is Naniku Amin Sama for more on News 360. Thanks for staying with us. Now let's look into some international news. And Nigerian President Mohamed Dubwari has sent an envoy to South Africa following the looting in Johannesburg. The government alleges the Nigerian-owned businesses have been targeted in the South African city, saying in a tweet that enough is enough. President Buhari wants the envoy to meet his South African counterpart to express Nigeria's displeasure over the treatment of her citizens and assurance of the safety of their lives and property. Other African governments have issued warnings to their citizens over the violence. South African officials have blamed criminality rather than xenophobia for the current problems. In a statement, Nigeria's High Commission in South Africa described the situation as anarchy and has called on Nigerians to come forward to report what has happened to them. Well, Special Rapporteur on uh, Extrajudicial Summary or Arbitrary Executions, Agnes Kalamad, says Nigeria's multiple security problems have created a crisis that requires urgent attention and could lead to instability in other African countries if not addressed. Security forces in Africa's most populous country are trying to tackle a decade-long Islamist insurgency in the northeast, banditry in the northwest, and bloody clashes between nomadic headsmen and farming communities over dwindling arable land in central states. As more international news on 3news.com, stay with us. Entertainment News comes up next. Thanks for staying with us. Now, undoubtedly, our private legal practitioner, Chachu Chikata, is highly regarded for his exploits as a legal luminary. But did you know the astute lawyer scores very high marks on the rankings of romantic and supportive husbands? Watch Miss Esther Koba talk about how amazing his sweetheart, Chachu Chikata, is. <laughs> Esther Amba Koba was all smiles as she has told her husband, lawyer Chachu Chikata, describing him as the right man for her. Speaking on TV3's time with the captains, the award-winning communications consultant revealed she's wowed by her husband's ceaseless humility, noting she's glad to have married such a warm-hearted man. Being married to Chachi Chikata, huh? <laughs> the love of my life. Um, that has helped me to achieve what my dream is because this is a man that believes in just supporting me to be what he says is I want you to flourish and that's what so if I'm at work at lunch time and my lunch is delayed he'll pick up the lunch basket and bring it to me and he allows me to be he he's very generous and very supportive Lawyer Chachu Chikata is known for many achievements, but for Esther Koba, his biggest achievement is being the best husband she could ever have. Esther Koba is a communication consultant and CEO of Strategic Communications Africa Limited, Stratcom Africa, a communication and reputation management agency based in Ghana. 
awesome there. Said a romantic lawyer, Chachu Chikata there. But it's no secret, women love makeup, as it often makes them feel more confident. Well, contestants of Ghana's Most Beautiful have been taken through makeup tutorials to equip them with the essential skills needed in artistry. Rules out, it becomes a problem when you're what, drawing it. Don't we say it's a problem when your eyebrows are all full? Yeah. yeah so Contestants we were taken through the rudiments of the artistry from prepping the skin, creative application skills, correction to lash and lip work. The makeup tutorials was facilitated by experienced artists from Silver Queen Cosmetics. This is what will be fine the brows and make it cleaner. The tutorial session was to equip the ladies to do their own makeup in the absence of a professional. I mean, talking about beauty pageants in Ghana, if not Ghana's most beautiful, which one else? It's a brand that represents Ghana. It's a brand about nature. It's a brand that represents us as a people. And so if I want something that would represent my brand really well, it's Ghana's most beautiful. The queens were each given a goodie bag of note cosmetic products. Ah. Okay, so I see a lady here. This one is for Yaya. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So you're gonna get everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so welcome, my dear. So the marketing manager for Silver Queen Cosmetics, distributors of Note Cosmetics, Presla Safwa Jassam, spoke about the benefits of using the vegan makeup brand. Note is made straight from natural ingredients. Note Cosmetics wouldn't give you any negative effect on your face. So as our beauty queens are using our product, they are assured that they are not going to have any negative feedback. Already we, we spoke to them and the feedback we are getting from them is beautiful as well. The queens describe the time with the experienced artist as fun and enlightening. <laughs> okay, you know, guys do makeups too. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what makes us look good. Mm. Yeah, mm. but my name is Alfred Akansi. And I am Aisha Yakubu. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Good evening.